Hi, I'm John the Mouse. In this video, we are going to talk about the different problems you get with biodiesel that is in your diesel fuel that affect your in vehicle's engine. This is some of the stuff I go over in detail at John the Mouse University. With better information, you can make better decisions, not only on your transportation business, but on your personal transportation. So let's roll into it. During the 1900 Paris Exposition, Rudolf Diesel displayed an engine running on peanut oil. His diesel engine initially was designed to run on mineral oil. This was the first time vegetable oil was on display as an alternative fuel source for the motor. Many unsaturated oils have poor atomization of the fuel in the fuel spray. You had coking of the injectors and leaving the combustion chamber and valve deposits of gummy residue. This undesirable burn characteristics of vegetable oil led the way in the 1930s in transforming vegetable oil into biodiesel. What you're trying to do with this biodiesel is change the vegetable oil into a better fluid to burn in the diesel engine. People started to add a catalyst to cause transfercation reaction to the vegetable oil. Some of the catalysts they use, you can see on the screen that I have compiled. If you'd like to know more, see this publication I found. This paper is very informative. If you live in the United States, excluding California, soybeans are currently the major feedstock to make soybean oil. With that oil, they add methanol, propanol, or ethanol in the presence of sodium hydroxide that acts as a catalyst. Now, the process of making biodiesel isn't rocket science. You can find plenty of people making it or showing how to make it on YouTube. After making your vegetable oil into a biodiesel, from what I understand, this creates metal carboxylate, carboxylate salt, aka soap, with carboxylic acid. You also get a byproduct of glycerin. Now, depending on what type of catalyst and vegetable oil, the biodiesel producer uses to make the biodiesel you'll see different quality of biofuel. You'll have to take out the glycerin in the largest byproduct out of the fuel before it can be used in your motor. As a side note, they sell this to the food processing companies after getting cleaned up to food grade quality. What about what's left in the biodiesel? Metal carboxylate, carboxylate salt, aka soap, with carboxylic acid. From what I understand is that you cannot remove all this from the biodiesel. As you can imagine, this is a problem as it forms deposits on the pintle of your injector. This will cause an incomplete burn in your cylinder. Not only will it disrupt your spay, spray pattern from the fuel injector, it can get bad enough that it can render your injector sluggish or seized if it gets bad enough. You'll even see problems before it gets to your fuel injector. The formation of soft particles from the metal carboxylates will plug your fuel filter. This will be a bigger problem in the wintertime. Biodiesel degradation happens when you have 
water in the fuel. The process is called hydrolysis. Wikipedia definition is any chemical reaction in which a molecule of water breaks one or more chemical bonds. The presence of water in the oil will turn into free fatty acids, FFAs. The FFA will react with the alkaline catalyst if present to produce a formation of soaps that will also clog your fuel filter. Now remember, biodiesel naturally attracts moisture. You mix it with ultra-low sulfur diesel fuel that also attracts water to a greater extent than the diesel fuels of the past. That gives microbes a place to thrive in. Sterile glucosides and bacteria in the fuel can clog up the fuel injector and fuel filter. But that's not the only way it degrades. Heat and time will help in degrading of the biodiesel. I found a study stating at 52 weeks, biodiesel samples stored at 39.2 degrees Fahrenheit or that's 4 degrees Celsius, and 68 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 20 degrees Celsius, fuel degraded less than 10%. The samples stored at a higher temperature of 104 degrees Fahrenheit, or 40 degrees Celsius, had nearly a 40% degradation during that same time period. Like I said earlier in my other section, they don't label on how they make the biodiesel or from what feedstocks on the pumps that you buy the biodiesel from. If you know or don't know they are running biodiesel in their fuel, I would suggest detergents or an additive in your fuel on every tank. Look for products that are labeled to take care of the IDID deposits. That's inter internal diesel injector deposits. I think at least one fuel tank per oil change. The next section we're going to get into the nitty gritty of running diesel fuel in the wintertime weather.